I, female 29 knew from a young age I didn't ever want to have or raise children. I met my husband in college, and he was decidedly child-free too. We got married a couple of years back. My husband's younger sister, 24 has three kids, a male kindergartner, and a male and female toddler with different dead bee guys. Two months ago, she left all of them at our house, said she was going on an errand and never returned. Just left. We filed a report on everything. Last we heard she was safe, but didn't want to return. My husband's mom is a minimum wage worker barely scraping by. She was a single mom and didn't want to raise these kids. I don't want to raise them either. Don't get me wrong. I feel bad for them. But raising kids is a huge responsibility I don't want to take up. In the two months they were here, our expenses increased. We had to buy them clothes and stuff and they're sleeping in our living room on air mattresses. We only have one bedroom. I had to work from home and look after them because my husband couldn't work from home and daycare for three is expensive. It's been rough to say the least. It's all on me. CBS got involved and asked us whether we wanted to keep the kids. I do not. I thought my husband would be on the same page, but he wants to keep the kids. CPS has access to decide quickly and make necessary changes get a bigger home for one. My husband and I have gone back and forth on this. I cannot live the next 16 years like this. Raising kids is hard and expensive but he wants to be there for his family, which I get. So yesterday, I told him I wanted a divorce quickly before he made any commitments and dragged me into it with him. He called me an idiot for divorcing over kids for abandoning him when he needed me. I told him he knew my boundaries well in advance, and this was a commitment, children, that he was unilaterally deciding on. Am I the idiot for wanting to divorce my husband because he unilaterally decided I would sacrifice 16 years of my life, career, and health to assume a mother role? He knew from the get-go I did not want in my life. Add it. I basically don't sleep for more than three hours. And I'm on the verge of losing my job. That should explain how much I get to work. The sister is safe, great. Maybe she can use her newfound freedom to take on a couple of jobs to earn money to pay child support for her own kids or get thrown in or for being a dead bee mom. You are not the idiot because forcing someone into parenthood is also bad for those children. If you're ill-equipped or unwilling, those children will be the ones who suffer for it. They deserve parents who want them wholeheartedly and nothing else. It would be better to end this marriage before the resentment of the takes over your life. He wants to keep the children, but you have to accommodate and take care of them all day long. If you want to shut this down with your husband, ask him who he thinks is going to stay at home and take care of all three kids since you can't afford daycare. I tell him that if I'm allowed to go to work and he's gonna stay at home and take care of kids, then no problem because, you know, damn well, he won't agree to that. I don't think it's about shutting him down. This is just a tragic and awful situation. It's commendable and understandable that the husband doesn't want his nieces and nephews to be taken by CBS and thrown into foster care. It's also understandable she doesn't want kids. He also may not have thought that far ahead yet but it's also possible there are government programs or sub these that can help given the situation. There may be a solution, and they may get divorced and end up wanting different things here. But the only villain is the sister. And hopefully, they can at least work together to figure out a transition plan for the kids who are innocent in all of this. Everyone is calling the sister an idya, and she is. But those kids had another parent too. When do the deadbeat dads have their comeuppance? It just angers me that people call for the mother to be arrested for child abandonment when the fathers also abandon their children. Like, I'm not defending the mom, they're just all trash. Imagine as a child that your dad leaves, your mom leaves you, your grandma can't take you in, and then your uncle and auntie give you up. Up got dull and awful hand, but the kids got even worse. I, 25 female, have been in my workplace for almost two years and get along with most of my colleagues. We regularly go out every other weekend and have activities that most of our colleagues join, including my colleague Max, 
33 male, Max is a very outgoing guy, extroverted, and has been in my workplace the longest six years. As the turnover here is relatively fast, I get along well with him and consider him my best friend at work. We share banter, have a good laugh, and have similar extroverted personalities. Max regularly attends work activities and is the life of the party and workplace. His wife of 10 years used to come to the activities sometimes before I joined the workplace, who no longer does since having a baby a while back. What really annoys me is how Max always puts his wife on a pedestal. He's always going on how she's the best cook and has the best looks and figures he'd ever seen. A simple conversation between colleagues regarding which celebrity we fancy would be, no, man. No one beats my wife in terms of looks. Who's the best looking in the workplace? No one here. I've got really high standards. Have you seen my wife? Some of our colleagues have agreed with him saying that wife is really gorgeous, but I'm sure they're just humoring him. We were going through each other's videos on TikTok when another coworker told Max's wife resembled an anime character. She's slim with long black hair and Asian, and I joked that she's not that pretty. Max got offended and retorted that she didn't need fake eyelashes and fake hair to look passable and that he understood why I needed them. I got angry and told him to screw off. Since then, Max hasn't spoken to me and has made passive-aggressive comments. Am I the idiot? She didn't need fake eyelashes and fake hair, and he understood why I needed them. I'm dying. Sweetheart, let me tell you something. You're unhinged and so jealous instead of trying to manifest a man like Max for yourself by throwing our good energy out there and encouraging him to talk up about her. Max sounds like a stand-up guy with a great relationship with his life partner. In fact, his love for his wife seems magical which is probably because she has a fantastic spirit and loves him back just as much. So you're jealous of his wife, are you? He's your best friend at work, but you told him his wife isn't that prissy, and you hate that he puts his wife on a pedestal. That's strange. I think it's brilliant. He loves and respects his wife so much that he takes every opportunity to talk her up, and especially since he doesn't participate in the who would you have intimacy with at work talk. Seriously? Yes. You are the idiot. This, Hopi is a pick-me who cannot stand any woman who isn't her getting compliments. Bitterness and jealousy are not a good look. Why would you want a friend to think their wife is ugly? I love it when my guy friends gush about their wives. It's adorable. I love that their wives make them happy. This leads me to leave. Opie is platonically, but like romantically possessive of him. Given she's bitter that he loves his wife, does anyone else feel Max is away stressing how pretty his wife is because Opie is so obviously into him and he's trying to shut that down? Girl, it's so obvious he want him. My husband, 35 and I, female 35, have high-paying jobs and a child-free. My brother, Charles, 37, and his wife, Bailey, 30 are both middle school teachers with three kids. Two months ago, Bailey asked if something was different about and glowy lately. I excitedly told her I started using an acne medication prescribed by Derm. I joked that it's like the fountain of youth in a tube. I explained it's helped so much with my hyperpigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, etc. It's made a pretty huge difference in my opinion, and it's pretty affordable. She was like, wow, really? Maybe I'll check it out. I told her she totally should, and I highly recommend going to an appointment. Bailey gave me a ring a few days ago and told me she could get an appointment and prescription after being more frugal with their spending. I told her, yay, let me know how it goes. However, she said she didn't realize it would be so expensive for a tube, a $140 and asked if maybe I have a spare bottle she thought it was affordable and wasn't sure what to do. I apologized and said I didn't really have any spares to give her, and she should check out GoodRx for some coupons on the price. I also apologized for saying it's affordable and meant that it was a good price for me and wasn't thinking with my comments. She got quiet for a second and then snapped right. We get it. You guys live like down one million as well we're in the trenches. 
her outburst took me aback and I didn't say anything. She said, I was being a witch for not trying to help her out and said it was my fault for misleading her about the price in the first place. She said she's safe for weeks to get that appointment. I told her we could continue this conversation later because I wouldn't sit here and be insulted. I hung up. She later teched me an apology saying she'd just been so overwhelmed with the kids and her body postpartum that she took it out on me. She then added if I could loan her some money, she'd appreciate it for the occasion she really needs. She joked we could use it as a tax write-off like other rich people. I didn't reply to her text. My husband agreed she was being ridiculous and acting like this is diabetes medication when it's purely cosmetic. He agreed not to give her a cent for this and ignore her. My brother asked me if I just do them this favor since it's pennies to us. They also had spent weeks saving for an appointment with the dermatologists since they thought the med would be affordable. I told them I'd already apologized for saying it's affordable and didn't appreciate being insulted and given backhanded comments by his wife. Am I the idiot? Edit. It's Tritino in for those curious. Not the idiot. It's not pennies. All your hard work got you where you are. If she cares that much, she could try and go back to school and become something that pays more. Tough crap. They made choices to be precisely where they are right now. I don't care if you're the richest couple in the world. It's not your responsibility to help with a damn acne cream. I could maybe see if it was a life or death medicine, but come on, acne cream she's tripping about. You suggested a miracle cream and stated it was affordable without realizing it wasn't affordable for them. She got hurt and lashed out. You both apologized. Family is family and tensions run high at times. If you can afford to make her day and buy a one tube to try it out, then she can budget to get it herself. It doesn't take much to be kind to someone else. Especially someone you will be associating with for years. Do you want to opt to pay for her treatment forever? Because one thing is you giving her as a gift for her birthday or Christmas, another is spending a $140 every month. And seriously, two working adults can't afford a $140. Bucks. Ah, your husband's comment about how this is pennies for you was unnecessary. If you're worried about your brother's finances and want to help, phone us on things for the kids such as clothes, toys, after-school activities, or even good health insurance. I'm a pharmacist, and we moved to California this month. To practice in California, we have a separate exam with a pretty poor pass rate, like 50 or 60 cent pass rate. I started studying a month ago in my free time, but it's limited since we also have two children, a toddler, and an infant. I initially opposed the move due to the exam's horrible pass rate and suggested we don't move until after I passed. Well, here we are. He couldn't wait for the promotion and wanted to come here. He's in big techs, so we're in the Bay Area. He makes decent money, 200, 250,000 give or take, depending on bonuses places us in the solid middle class in the Bay Area. I told him I couldn't work because I have to pass this test. The test date is November 6th, but if I fail, I have to retake it after another one and a half months or longer. I'm staying home to study, and I do the pickup and drop off for our kids at daycare. He's saying we should pull them from daycare so I can watch them as a stay-at-home mom. I told him I wouldn't have time to study. He then said I should go get a part-time job. I told him I refuse to work some minimum wage job because we don't need that money. It would only generate four or five hundred dollars a week or around twenty or twenty-five thousand per year, which is a nice bonus but not necessary for us. He says I need to stop being a freeloader and contribute to the home. I told him he was being unreasonable because I am the primary caretaker of our two kids before and are a daycare and do all the chores at home already. No different than a stay-at-home mom with kids in K-12. Plus, I'm jobless because of him, and I initially opposed the move we're currently at a standoff. He wants me to contribute financially to the family by either watching both kids all the time or telling me to work at some random job, i.e. McDonald's, and that results in way less time studying and possibly ruining my career for good. So am I an idiot for refusing to work?
Ask him if he'd rather pay alimony to a single stay-at-home mom or a practicing pharmacist. You are not the idiot and your husband appears unaware of anything past the tip of his nose. Doesn't he realize that if he sabotages your success on the board exams, he won't make the 170 to 210,000 a year that Indeed.com says you'll be earning once you're employed in your field? He wants me to contribute to the family financially. I'm not convinced. Are you sure he isn't just trying to keep you from earning more than him? I smell sabotage. Your husband is Nadia. Wow. Hoping you are contributing to the household financially. You're saving him a fortune in housekeeping services, chef services, laundry services, etc., all while studying for what sounds like a very difficult exam. You will contribute even more finance once you've completed the professional exam. You're not struggling financially at this time. And once you've completed this exam and are actually working in your profession, once again, we'll more than compensate for the time that you were freeloading. Personally, I'd wait until you pass the exam, put your professional license for California and then kick him to the curb while suing for child support. But I'm petty that way. By the way, California is a 5050 state regarding the division of marital assets. Good luck. So my girlfriend and I have been trying to have a kit, and we've been successful, and she's currently two months pregnant. We were just hanging out, and then she told me that she's to me to sell my motorcycle soon because it was just too dangerous of a hobby to have as a soon-to-be dad. I told her I wouldn't do since I've been riding for the past 10 years and have been perfectly fine, and she's just overreacting. She told me that she wasn't gonna budge on this and that I had to do it. I told her that it wasn't her choice to make, and I wasn't gonna give up my hobbies just because I was about to become a dad and that she should have brought this up back when we decided to start trying for a kid. Am I the idiot for not wanting to give up my motorcycle after my girlfriend got pregnant? Not the idiot because you're right that she should have mentioned this was a deal breaker for her. I'm not sure what she means by not budging though. If she's saying she'll break off your relationship, she can't simply make these demands. Consider discussing that you'll be safe and take all safety measures. Everyone's the idiot here. I mean, yes, she are known to clear this up when you were both trying for a pregnancy. But I also would be terrified of becoming a widow single parent if my partner rode a motorcycle so I can empathize with her. All I ever hear from my hospital friends is how often they see these accidents and how horrific they are. By the way, after my girlfriend got pregnant, so you had no part in there. My dad quit riding his motorcycle when I was two or three because he encountered a motorcycle accident and was like, I can't do this anymore. I have a kid. He parked his bike and never rode again. I'm 45. The thing with motorcycle accidents is that it's hardly ever about a lack of skill or safety measures taken by the motorcyclist, and more often than not about dangerous behaviors by others. You're so damn vulnerable on a motorcycle. Op. I hope you're seeing this. I don't think you're an idiot, but I hope you consider this.